Hello, and welcome to the After Show Afterthoughts. And here I am with my wonderful guest, Clayton LaBeouf. Look at him. Look at my handsome friend. There he oh, is. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there, there he is. All those, all those years that, all those years later, here we are in the same space. We haven't been in the same space for a very long time. Okay. Thank you so much, Clayton, for that wonderful hour. It was, a, it's a lovely hour. Well, you got me. Yeah, you got me. You were able to, you know, to 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 bring some stuff out there. That, like I said, I don't do a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I know. I know you don't. And and I'm honored that uh, you really consented to come on and talk a bit about it. And, you know, I just want people to know more about you. Your work speaks for itself, but it, you are more than your work. You are a person, you are a well-rounded person and our conversations reflect that. And I really you know, wanted that to come across more than anything else. That was- in you're, you're from New York and you know, some of our conversations, I was saying on the radio that we got to know each other after the show. We did. Because, we did. you know, while in rehearsal, you you doing on Esther, who got, you know, you don't have no time to be. Yeah, I was I was a little concentrated. Oh, you was one. concentrated for real now. <laughs> you know, if you're playing someone 100 and how old was the woman? She was 237 years old, something like that. You got time to concentrate on Clayton LaBeouf <laughs> or anybody else in this show. Well, yes, <laughs> but we used to have, you, we had con conversations about moments on the stage, yeah. the moments about building, you know, building the ship. Remember, I would take that. That would do it every single night. And the moment that I really had an out of body experience, because it would really would be my mother would kind of take over and do okay. two kinds of things. We talked about all that stuff. But one yeah. of the things that I wanted just to continue about is uh, are the things that that you are doing now. You, of course, will always be a, a talented actor. We'll be able to see you in television, film, in the theater. But what are the what what is right now your focus? What is it that you want to accomplish? And I want people to hear about that. Yeah, some of the people I didn't get a chance, or I had the chance and didn't do it up uh, in the radio. I got into this, Lenny. I didn't tell you uh, through playwriting. Mm -hmm. What I'm what I mean by that was uh, I was down in New Orleans. Uh, I was part of a group called the Black Music Association that came out of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Started by Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. It was at a time when the music explosion in the 70s, and I told you, I was this shocking. They had an organization, a nationwide organization called the Black Music Association mm -hmm. and to assist uh, this wonderful thing we all know. Black music has been all over the world. Uh, what Black Americans have done, the gift that they've given to the world is, uh, that's what I'm working on. Yeah. So. Uh, I wrote a play down there. Some guy from South Africa was lambasting everybody down there in one of the sessions because there was a cultural boycott going on. Mm -hmm. Black artists mm -hmm. were getting paid to perform in Sun City. Mm -hmm. And it was the United Nations was asking Black artists not to perform in Sun City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a big boycott. Arthur Ashe, Harry Belafonte, Phyllis Hyman said when they offered her the amount of money, she knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, she mm -hmm. said the amount of money they was offering told me something wasn't right about it because it was a huge amount that the South Africans were offering Black artists. And some of them broke the boycott. And that affected me because the brother that was speaking down at the conference, he was saying, you know, you guys don't understand what we're going through. We're asking you not to come and you're doing it. You're singers, you're musicians, and you're getting paid. And it affected me to where I got back and I wrote my first play. Mm -hmm. It was called Tied Apart and I put it up. I produced it uh, with a young man named Ron Tucker, wonderful young man who read my script. He said, Clayton, this is, I got a few grand. Let's put this thing up. Mm -hmm. And we did it, uh, put the, uh, I had auditions and what, and Zelda Fitchhandler got in touch with me because mm -hmm. of that. Zelda, That's, yes, yes. Zelda Fitchhandler had an assistant call me and that assistant coach said, Clayton, I got to tell you something. Zelda Fitchhandler wants to meet you. 
Now tell people who at that point in time, there are many awards named for Zelda, but yes. at that point in time, she was at Arena Stage? Yes, she was uh, the founder, obviously re responsible for people who you know. She worked with people like Lloyd Richards. Mm -hmm. She worked with people like Hal Scott, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, James Earl Jones, of course, mm -hmm. with that groundbreaking production that they had there, uh, The Great White Hope. Oh. Yes, it's that's what put arena. arena stage on the map. Mm -hmm. Very controversial play mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, what was the lady's name in it that played with James? Jane, Jane Alexander. Alexander. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that was the one that actually changed the way Broadway did business, Lenny. I don't know, a lot of people are not aware of. Uh, that was the first Broadway show that came out of a repertory theater company. I didn't know that. That was my first Broadway show, Great White Hope. That was your first, first time. Program? That was my first show. My high school teacher took wow. us to the theater and, and he wanted to see it. So he was very glad to be able to. He was glad to know. take the students. Exactly. And then James Earl Jones came out. He became in a matinee and he came out and spoke to us. I, I love like, name dropping. I really love name dropping because there's so many. When I say name dropping, I don't mean who I know. I know. I mean it sharing. You know how we mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. There's a lady that came on. Zelda called me. I had her assistant call me, Benita Hofstetter. And she said, young man, I hope you have two monologues ready because this is an opportunity for you a little behind. This lady <laughs> is calling to see you. Exactly. And I met her. I came in and she said, Clayton, I've heard. She didn't see Tide Apart, the show. But she said, I'm hearing what you're doing. And I wanted to meet you. And she said, do you have two monologues you can show me? I said, yes, I do. I did that. It was just me and her in the arena. And you know, you work. I know. Arena. I know the arena. I know the room. I know I'm know. i standing there and she's the only one in the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. With an assistant. And then she said, how much would you like to work here? And I said, well, thank you for asking me. I would love to work here. Uh, however, this is the defense mechanism. I'm doing my own thing. And this lady dropped something on. She said, Clayton, I know that. Maybe you can do both. Mm -hmm. And that was a big lesson for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was being a little different. I'm doing my thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Okay, we know you're doing your thing. But maybe you can work on this level as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why balance, I said, is my favorite. Word. There's levels. I used to watch Ruby D and I C Davis be in a library in the community and then be on television in a movie. Mm -hmm. It's like they didn't separate. One minute they're at a college talking to the people. Mm -hmm. And they're saying more than just stick to your goals and dreams. They're dropping stuff, writing books, being over here. Do you know what I found on Ruby D recently? Because mm -hmm. I have, I have a, um, a collaborator that's working on something about her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in the streets of New York City in 1970. You got to see this clip, people. Lenny, you go on YouTube and you put Ruby D and police brutality. She's standing in the street reeling off names off a list of young black men killed by the police in, in the 70s. In the 70s. That's so what they, were, they were activists then. I mean, you know Bad. that Ossie Bad. was did the eulogy to Malcolm X. So, you know, See, yeah. That's the kind of thing I'm saying that we can now share this with our young people. Mm -hmm. It's only a 21 second clip. Where did that come from? I tend to look at those things as plays in film. Where was this 21 minute clip of Ruby D standing in the street with a list reeling there. There's more to that story. Absolutely. More to that Absolutely. story. Absolutely. See, this is this is what I, you know, I mean, the, these are the kinds of conversations and these are the kind of topics that I think that people need to know that we we do talk about. We all yes, don't we do. just talk about the next audition, which is important. Yes, it is. I mean, it's how we make a living, but also that we have an investment in our own culture yes. and how we are perceived and and what kind of characters we're, we're, you know, being portrayed as. And and we are we are concerned about it and we are Very much so. about it. We're concerned that the accurate that people are accurately portraying us, that people who understand our culture portray us. If they're not of our culture, we just ask that they understand who we are and don't just do caricatures, but do understand, you know, uh, who we are. That's actually, I, I, I feel very excited about the future uh, because some of this untold stories, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many stories now that these tools like, you know, the internet and the Facebooks and 
you read about stories, people are doing wonderful things and posting accomplishments and achievements. So someone said, well, where's the drama in that? You say, well, people had to go. Yesterday was Michael Jackson's birthday. There's a young man on Broadway now playing him to the utmost. Mm -hmm. People would say, well, he was controversial or whatever. I said, okay, well, it, we'll take it past him. Who did he study? Yeah. He studied the man behind me. Michael Jackson worked with the man behind me, yes. Marvin Gaye, yes. Smokey Robinson. Yes. So we can take it past James him. Brown. I James mean, Brown. exactly. All of those. And who did James study? I mean, there were, you know, I mean, you know, there were, there were people, everybody studied somewhere. And there's such a, a wonderful legacy that, you know, you that, don't have to get yeah. into arguments about opinions about individuals. We all have opinions. Yes. But I find that the more we go deeper, the more the stories unfold. And it gives, I have an initiative that I've started. It's called Write, mm -hmm. W R I T E. Mm -hmm. And it's an initiative to try to get more people to write screenplays and works for the stage, I call them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you say plays, people think a uh, play. You know, it's like, oh, uh, you just playing out. No, this is, and you know, this is serious art form. Yes. So I now call them works for the stage to be a little more thespian with it. But the, the right, the right is an acronym that stands for writers respond to invigorate theatrical expression. Wow. That's what the word right, right means to yes. me. That's the, the acronym. Yes. And so say, so, oh, wow. So it's to get uh, different people who may not know how to write a play or a 10 minute play is what I focus on with younger people say, do you know you can write a 10 minute play? They're very big in a lot of theaters. A lot of, and you know what? I, I, I you done one? really advocate that I've directed some. Yes. And, and I really think that it is when people take those wonderful 10 minute plays and decide that they have to expand them so and, they'll be acceptable yes. that they dilute what they had captured in those 10 minutes. I think it's wonderful that we have 10 minute play festivals because those are some of the most compact, yes. really well-written, well-acted pieces. They, they, they make the point. You don't have to sit for an hour and a half to get the mm. point. They mm. make the point and then we move on. We and you can it. see a lot of different kinds of works within a one or two hour span because they're 10 minutes. So you can see a lot of different perspectives, a exactly. lot of different people. Uh, and that's a way uh, that's a way that these stories, like you say, can grow into fuller plays. I remember you did something with a young man called Abdul. And wasn't it about Nina Simone? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I remember. Yes, I did. I did a piece about Nina Simone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's very, so, you know, I, I stay in contact with, with Abdul. You? you know, it's it's very important that uh, we develop these pieces and that that they stay alive, that all of these pieces, you know, we, we regenerate, we not do the same one, two plays over and over again, that we yeah. put in into the, the, the into the Can whole it. package, more plays, more choices, more alternatives. You know, that's the balance, as you call it, the balancing yeah. act. It is very, very important. I and just you know, finished up um, working, uh, well, I'm doing some continued work, a group uh, called All About the Drama Theater Company. The name of my theater company is The Genre Group. And I've teamed up with a lady named Ella Davis. Mm -hmm. And she has the All About the Drama Theater Company. Mm -hmm. And then there's Cheryl Hawkins, who has Prosperity Media, which does both theater and uh, and we just did a thing at the newly renovated Martin Luther King Library. They put some money. You should see the Martin Luther King Library now. Mm. It's totally renovated. And guess what? They have a theater in there called the Toni Morrison Theater. Oh, really? Yes. Named after uh, Miss Morrison. If that's not officially, they're working towards, it's a beautiful theater space. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did a program called Back in the Black. And it was about uh, playwrights in the past mm -hmm. and moving in and they, they they shine the light on the work that I'm doing because again people know me as you know an actor per se exactly. but I like to say you know theater arts yes you know, yes yes to cover a little bit more, more. Of exactly acting. like I said it's you know uh there's the the there there are a lot of disciplines that are in the equation that make up you you, you know make up 
Clayton and that they're the discipline of writing, the discipline of producing, the discipline of discovery, the discipline of acting. You know, you have music, you have all of those things that are there. So as you say, there is a liquid, there's a fluid fluidity about the arts that we can move from one place to the other and then respect one another. And so that people don't look down on people and say, well, now, you, you're not an actor, you're a singer. You're not a singer, you're an actor. Thank you, Manny. That's what I'm talking about because yes. it's so interesting. You know, we all have personal taste, mm -hmm. but when someone comes with someone different, I'll share a story, but I won't name the person. I was in a show at center stage and a young man was in, well, he's not young. He'd been around for a minute. He was upstairs and he started lighting into Sade, mm -hmm. the singer, mm -hmm. in a way where it was so harsh that I'm, I'm serious. You know, I'm saying, excuse me, but do you, do you know her? You know, because he was lighting into her. And he said, no, I don't know her. I said, well, brother, you know, she's, I, he didn't like her. So mm -hmm. I just had to let him know, okay, got that. But bro, I said, uh, it seems like there's a whole lot of people who do. <laughs> you know, that's all I got to say. So what, I, what I'm realizing that is like, if we get past individuals, sometimes a story will unfold. Once we get past a man, and we're not going to get past him, but we'll get to his wife, who was Alice Coltrane. Mm -hmm. Who's going to betray her? Mm -hmm. We can talk about John Coltrane and Roe, mm -hmm. but he had a balance. Yes, he I did. It was Alice Coltrane. Yes, it he? was. Yes, it and was. And so when you start to see her on screen, some sister jumping into it or on, on the stage where it can start, I'm not afraid to share ideas because the well is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. That I'm like, hey y'all, we can get, we can get busy now. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got the equipment, the camera equipment. But again, we can start at the root though, because you don't have to have a lot of money, uh, you know, to put up a theatrical piece. No. As no. much as film, as much no. as film. Not as much, not as much as film. What you do have to be is is you have to be dedicated, and you have to be um, genuine in your in yes. one. And, and as you say, the story first, it should be, you know, we all know that a lot of projects are not green lighted unless they can have a star, unless a star is there and they can, you know, because it's all about money. This is a business. It is a business. Some of the bolder we, directors yeah. are, will take a chance. You have certain yes. bold directors. Well, they're, they're braver. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah. the brave. Yeah. I love the brave ones, the men and women who are brave who say, you know, I know I'm going to take a chance on you. I'm going to take you a chance. You know who's very brave? Uh, two, uh, two people that I can say were very brave with me. Irene Lewis. Yes. Stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and Molly Smith is, is brave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've worked yeah. Molly them. Smith mm -hmm. uh, did something that um, is amazing. I was in the 50th anniversary production of The Great White Hope. Mm -hmm. and do you know the character that I played was Scipio. He yeah. is the vagabond or the uh, the bum, the homeless kind of man who takes Jack Johnson to task mm -hmm. for being with the white, white. girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In rehearsal, I challenged Molly. In rehearsal, I told her that he was um, Jamaican, and I wanted to play him with an accent, and she didn't like the idea. But I told her why, and I went to the script and told her, "You see this reference here of the plumed hat." that the character is wearing, that's a reference to Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. And Molly was like, okay, you're backing your thing up. By the time the production went on, Lenny, my character turned into an African king mm. from a bum to a, a spirit. It turned a character, that's the beauty of theater again. Mm -hmm. The character is like a vagabond. Mm -hmm. They had the gloves for me with the whole, my costume was, raggedy sackcloth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when we started the production royalty mm -hmm. that's a bold director because mm -hmm. she recognized and listened to where the actor was coming from because i was going straight to the, i wasn't making it up in my head yes I, she didn't know about the maroons mm -hmm. so see when she's said, well why do you want to play it like this i said are you familiar with the maroons the africans that you know ran off into the forest and didn't take no mess. Everybody didn't lay down. Mm -hmm. You know, there was some fighters. Yes. You know, that's why we're here. 
Yeah, exactly. Everybody don't lay down and just take some of this oppression. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when I told her about the Maroons, so she listened. And the next thing you know, a friend of mine came in my dressing room during dress rehearsals. He said, you better go into the costume shop, Clayton. They doing something to your costume. And when I walked in there, yeah, whole regal. Mm -hmm. So that's a bold, that's a bold director. Yes, it is. But you know, they're they're rare if you are and you and you are blessed when you have the opportunity to come across them. And if you are really ready for them when you come across them, you know. Marion McClinton, bold. Mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever got a chance to work with Marion. I did not before he passed away. I did not. His spirit lives. Yeah, this was a cat that was very bold as well, because I could uh, you could challenge Marion and if he disagreed with it, it'd be passionate but it would be to get to something mm -hmm. and uh, he would get to something. I was challenging Marion on Raisin in the Sun mm -hmm. and I told Marion that the two, uh, the two characters, Bobo and Willie were con artists that ran a scam on Walter Lee because it was my feeling that Walter Lee was a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. And the street cats knew he was a mama's boy and they could do what's called a flim flam. You know, New York, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and that's the take that I had on Marion disagreed in the first couple of read throughs. But once I started breaking it down and referring again to the source material, Mm -hmm. We can all come up with ideas. And if you're going off of the script, then you just have ideas. You're trying to change. But I went and Bobo says, or first, it's the, the woman that says it, uh, Ruth. He said, yeah, we're going to go into business, me and Bobo. And she said, Bobo. Bobo. And she yes, said. I remember. And Bobo. that's an early clue exactly. as to there's, something. There's, there's something awry. About something, Bobo. I don't like him. Whatever the clue is, because all she says is one word. We can't fill the whole thing in, but she said right. Bobo. Yeah. See, and that's that well, women's so Everybody intuition. knows Bobo, Bobo's in the street. Bobo's no good Thank is you. what it is. Come that's on. the indication. Fill in the blanks. You know. And then yeah. later on, Bobo tells Walter Lee that I didn't put up as much money. I think I'm paraphrasing, but I didn't put up as much money. Yeah, I didn't put as much money up as, as he did. Look yes, yeah. he, didn't take, he didn't take that chance. And, you know, I mean, he... He got taken because he thought he was going to be on in on it as much, but everybody. Yeah, bold director in the table, as you know, in table work, you know, when we did Gem of the Ocean, you know, you want to get into that table work so you can flesh out the, that's the beauty again of theater. Plays, you have to read between the lines a lot. And, and if also, you, you know, you don't want to clone, you know, anything on. else that has been done. Um, you want to bring to it your own experiences. That's and right. in the case that I had, you know, I, I really, my, my family experiences where, I mean, I have a great grandmother who lived to be 110, 112. My grandmother lived to be 94. These women had such great humor. There was not, there was no way in the world that I could justify my portrayal and interpretation as being maudlin. Serious, yes. Very yes. dramatic, yes. But what brought them through everything is that they could laugh at things. They could laugh and they could make fun of folks and laugh at them. And that was that 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 it was, was in the play. Mind. Yes, it was. It you really found was. it. Great. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of humor in, in August. And some people don't want to acknowledge it and they want to play it a different way. But I I liked that because. The contrast of it, because when I did get to be dark, I was very dark. I was yes, because she is. Yeah. But once again, see, that that's called balance. Mm -hmm. See, if you have someone who's 200 something years old, maybe the way they got their way is because they have humor. You know what you had with you? What's called in the African folklore tradition is the trickster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the trickster, you know, sometimes they're ageless. You see people, yes. they have a certain ability to be, they have age in terms of number, but their their youthful spirit yes carries yes. them, you know, and that's what allows them that that's what allows them the longevity. Yes, yes, yes I'm dealing with that with the thing you see behind me. That's one of my recent pieces that was put up before 
we were going to try to bring it to some other places. Mm -hmm. uh, but the pandemic changed the world. We actually closed. And as soon as we closed the run in Anacostia, uh, in Washington, D.C., place called the Anacostia Playhouse, bam, this thing hit and changed the whole world. Oh, world. It has. It yeah, has. So we're getting ready to remount it. Don't know exactly when. Well, but but also understanding that it has taken two years to adjust to the fact that we are in a new age of germ warfare. And, mm -hmm. and, and so that we have to adjust to that. That we can't cower away from it. We did. We had to. We had, we had to go inside and protect ourselves. But now things are being discovered so that it will we will regain our footing without yeah. really threatening our health because that's what you want you want the audience to come in and feel very very comfortable feel like everything is fine all the all you want them to do is enjoy what you are presenting to them so we'll get there well yeah. you did something early on with um the work with norman lear it has a theatrical they call them sitcoms mm -hmm. but that term, they have more of a theatrical approach. Of so course. Well, we did it in front of a, a, a live a, audience. Of a live audience. Mm -hmm. So that's coming back around with the pandemic. A lot of theater companies Company. exactly. are doing, are doing still nothing like going to the theater, of course. Mm -hmm. No, but, no, but it is. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you do get a sense mm -hmm. of the theatricality. Of, and then as this thing subsides, uh, people will go back to the stage and see it live. You know, I'm looking, exactly. I'm looking forward to that time because yeah. I've got a yeah. couple of pieces that, I'll, that I'll, I plan to put up. We just have to take care of ourselves and make sure that we have the longevity so that we can let the pendulum swing the other way. Yes. And commissions. I have to, uh, like I said, names and drop in. There's a young lady that came on a board with me um, at Arena Stage at the same time. We were asked to join the Arena Stage Theater Company. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. I was asked, and a lady named Margot Hall, beautiful mm -hmm. sister, mm -hmm. who is now, and I think, Lenny, that maybe you should contact her because you're doing your thing mm -hmm. with your work. Uh, her name is Margot Hall. She's the artistic director now of the Lorraine Hansberry Theater in San oh. Francisco. Oh, okay. And this sister is no, yeah, she she was yeah. bad when I met her. Yeah, Back well, you know, I mean, that's, the, Lorraine is one of my favorites. Like I say to people, it, without Lorraine, we would have no Lloyd. Without Lloyd, we would have no August. Come on. Come so on. I say, all salute to Lorraine. All that's salute. why. I, that's what I mean by name drop. Yeah. It's not just randomly named. Yeah. I'm like name dropping. There's some actors, you know, that you get a chance to work with. This cat named Russell Andrews, mm -hmm. a brother that was out of the Houston, Texas area. I was in a uh, seven guitars with him. Harriet Foy. Harriet mm -hmm. D. Foy, Harriet, yes, yes. Is serious. Harriet D. Foy, come on stage. She'll let actors know, you know. Sarette Scott, mm -hmm. a director. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you work with different people, mm -hmm. you know. You know, that, you know, you, you know. know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keith Randolph Smith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? There are just a number of people who work in the repertory theater circles, and you'll see them, you know, uh, on different television programs or what have yeah. you. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. number of people you get a chance to work with and you see how serious they take the craft. You know, yeah. I, well, I've you know, fortunate. I mean, it's it 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 is by, by for those of us who really are, are are dedicated to it. It's a calling. It's not a job. Yeah. It's a calling. Yes. You know? It's a way of life. It is. And it could sound it could sound, you know, sometimes a bit where people say, well, aren't you aren't you interested in? movies and being in Hollywood. And I'm like, listen, if you're interested in story and your journey, my journey took me to yes. television. Mm -hmm. So it's not that, you know, that you, you don't have an interest in it. Mm -hmm. My interest is story. Mm -hmm. exactly. And when I get into that, sometimes it will spur me to write. When I first wrote my first play, it was because I would not see certain people that I knew on stage. Exactly. In, in which which is what spurs all of us all from time to time. It spurs all of us from time to time to do things so that we can then see the, the images that we want to see. Not the images that other people have projected upon us, but the images that we that represent us more closely and more accurately. 
And I think that is that is why the um, independent contractors are yes. far more now prominent than they were 10, 20 years ago, because it is important. That's not to say that the established people are not there and they are always, and they will always be there, but there is a voice developing about from those of us who want to see other things, other things. Well, what's happening now is I used to say it a while ago that I think that uh, the bread and butter of the upcoming future theater uh, world for black people in particular is bio stories, biographies. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There are just so many, I just mentioned Alice Coltrane. Yeah, who, exactly. Who's gonna do Gil Scott Heron? Yes, who's gonna right. do Gil, yeah, yeah. See, when you start dropping bio, who's gonna do Jan, Jean Metzlinger, the guy that's responsible for the shoe, yeah. the shoe machine, the invention of the shoe. See, yeah. that's almost can become the bread and butter of the theater. Yeah, uh, I have to mention one sister that is so bad. Uh, God bless this sister. I had a chance to meet her before she passed away. I don't hear as much talk about this sister that I wish that I could hear. Mm -hmm. So I will, Dr. Barbara Ann Tier. Barbara Ann Tier, yes. Um, this lady did it. Yes, it's interesting to me. She has a theater yes. in Harlem. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's been there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, whatever it is, the point is that sister has left a serious, serious legacy. They're doing some things over there now because of some, um, I think they're building around it. Oh, yeah, they've, 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 been, they've, been, uh, they've been awarded money so that they can, they're really recreating that whole atmosphere. And it's it's developing really. Uh, She's a giant in the theater world. Mm -hmm. With me, her, and Melvin Van Peebles, because like I said, people think Melvin. The only thing they think Melvin did was sweet back yeah. then, putting up shows on Broadway. Yes, he had. What he had three, I think, at one time. The uh, Waltz of the Stork, Don't play us cheap, and uh, ain't supposed to die mm -hmm. natural mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. And when we when we delve into this, we'll come up and we'll find stories like Muhammad Ali acted off Broadway mm -hmm. in a play. In a Muhammad play. Ali when he got stripped. So you see, when we start to unearth, my thing is is when people say, "Are you an actor?" I said, "Well, a story activist." I don't, you know, there's, you know what I mean. There's an activist is a term. I'm not out there railing and ranting because there's something that I say now that came to me and I wrote it down. You know how we say, speak truth to power? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I flipped it. I've said, the power already knows the truth of our people. So we have to speak power to our truth. We can say, we speak in truth to power. I say, they already know your power. You don't have to speak truth to them. They know the truth, maybe even more than you do. Yeah. about how deep your culture goes. Exactly. So I've tried to flip that to make a, you know, to make a point about when we start to unearth some of these men and women, the stories are there waiting to be told and they will be seriously dramatic. Like you say, 10 minute plays, one act, full length. And then if it moves forward into a feature film, a TV series, like they are, yeah, but yeah, we're with they are. yeah, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening now. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, I am. And with that, my friend, I have now taken up more time than I promised you that I would. No problem. But, and it's great seeing you. Know, you. It's just fabulous seeing you and yeah. um, and hearing you. And will hopefully you will come on again and continue to educate us and over make us overstand. Overstand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Many things. Yes. Uh, please, uh, because uh, it's it's absolutely necessary. Thank you so much, Clayton. Thank I want you. To I want to thank you, uh, Lenny, for even uh, you you participated in the early aspects of my latest work. I don't know if you you you, you did the narration on one of the early readings. Mm -hmm. and I really yes. appreciated your uh, oh, it's taking always your time off to do that. It's, it's always my pleasure. It's always, 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 always. I want you to stay on for one minute as I sign off um, oh. so I can just say my own personal thank you. But I'd like to thank everyone 
for tuning in to this, the after show, after thoughts. Now you can tell by this, the radio show was really deep. So I would suspect that you want to see both of them in tandem. Uh, and I will see you at the next after show, after thoughts. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.